In this session, we're going to go over Nuke's user interface, how you modify it, and how you can use it to make your compositing faster. First off, let's go over the different components of the interface. Nuke is made up, made up of a series of panes. First, we have our file and our other top menus. These are similar to most other applications. They have your new, open, close, save, import, export. You have edit. That's where you can work with copy, paste, and other node-specific options. And you'll see that via the node menu inside the edit. That's an important one if you're looking for specific things like input processes or turning on bookmarks and postage stamps. Workspace is specific to the actual UI and how it's presented. You can save multiple presets or use Nuke's own uh, inbuilt presets. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Viewer, just control some of the viewer options. Render is what you use if you're working with multiple write nodes at the same time. Cache, this is an important one. This is where you'll clear out all your buffers and cache. Um, as you work, these tend to get full and this is where you'll want to go to clear those out. Help is obviously for help. That's where you'll have your keyboard shortcuts, documentation release. It has quick links to the forums and Nukipedia. Uh, I would familiarize yourself with this as we talked about in our previous session. So next up, we have our toolbar on the left-hand side. The toolbar actually holds all of the nodes. So every node that Nuke has access to lives in this toolbar. And one of the fun things too is there's an all plugins button which will expose some of the hidden plugin or hidden tools that live inside Nuke. So this is our viewer tab. And these are all the default settings for the compositing workspace. You can see if you go here, it changes to other, other workspace settings. But I'll just go over the general tabs here and what panes that you usually wanna be operating with. Everybody has a little bit different setup, but this is kind of the ones I like and the ones that are important in your day-to-day -day work. So we have our viewer. You can have multiple viewers. You can set them up side by side or one on top of the other so that you're only seeing one at a time. This is kind of work specific. There are definitely cases where I have a viewer set up to use in 3D space and a viewer set up in 2D space because I'm doing things with projection mapping or other 2D operations that are affecting something in 3D or vice versa. Next up, we have our node graph. So our node graph is where all our different tools actually interact. This is where we're adding tools, connecting them, creating read nodes and write nodes and letting them do their thing. We also have the curve editor and the dope sheet. Both of these deal with keyframes. The main difference is the curve editor deals with the keyframes position in time as well as its value, where the dope sheet only deals with the keyframes position in time and doesn't modify the values. Then we have our property pane. Our property pane is where all of our tool settings will actually be. So if you create a tool, this is where you'll change most of your settings. There are a few tools that might have sub, sub menus and uh, toolbars in the actual viewer, but for the most part, you'll live in the property bin. Next up is background renders. If you're using something like frame server, this is where you're gonna get information on what's rendering and its status. So that's kind of the default setup for compositing. There are also a few other panes that are very useful. You can access those via a pull down menu next to each pane. So here it lets us split either vertical or horizontal. We can float the planes, close them. We can solo them out, which makes it just the only one. <clears throat> you can see you can really do a lot of different stuff. You can collapse them, and maximize your workspace. So if you want to add a new tab or use a different tab setup, you can go to the Windows menu and then you'll see you have options here. So we already have node graph properties, curve editor and dope sheet showing. Progress is contextual. So if you're doing something that uses a process that triggers a status bar, progress will just pop up in your screen. You can also hard anchor that to a pane. So if you don't want it to pop up and take up your middle of your screen, you can actually apply that to a pane and now whenever you're processing something, it'll show up here. You also have the toolbar, which is what we have on the left hand side there. Error console, this is a really important one, uh, especially as you get into bigger scripts or you're getting into things that are a little more complex. Error console is really nice for figuring out what's going wrong with a script because it'll give you a readout 
of what tool might be having an issue or why it's having an issue. Pixel Analyzer is a fun tool. I don't particularly use it often, but it's something to read about. Profile, background renders, script editor is something I also use regularly. It gives you some information if you're running scripts or anything else like that. It gives you a little bit of visual feedback on what's going on inside your scripts. If you want to add a new viewer, you can also do that via this menu. You can hit new comp viewer and you'll see it added a second tab to your main viewer pane. Say you wanted to have these side by side, you can do split horizontal and then all the panes are actually drag and drop. You can also then go here, close tab, close pane, and now you're back to just the single pane and the single viewer. And you'll notice that the viewer node actually generated and deleted when you modified it in the UI. I'll show you how to you modify and then save a user preference for a UI. My personal single monitor setup is I like to have my error console, my script editor, and that's about it. I already, and then I'll want to bring back my dope sheet and my curve editor. So now I actually like to put my node graph split in with my properties bin. So you can either split this here or when you drag one panel over, you'll see you get the full orange highlight around the edge. If you get near one of the edges, it'll actually show you a split. So in this case, I want my node graph to be on the bottom. And then I'll put my, I like my script editor there and I like my error console there. And then here I have my curve editor and my dope sheet in one pane. I like to pull these down. The idea being that I want to maximize this for about a 16.9 workspace. Occasionally, if you're working in some wider aspect ratio things, you can modify this as well. And all of your panes have grab handles, so you can modify their size here. Something else worth noting, Nuke has the ability to expand any panel by just tapping the spacebar. So whenever you tap the spacebar, it will expand that pane that you're hovered over. This is particularly useful if you're doing playback or review, or if you're doing major node graph work and you don't need to see your viewer or see any of the other panes, you can use this to really do that quickly without having to rely on a second monitor. Something else worth noting is hotkeys apply in all of the panes, sometimes differently. For the most part, F will center and H will scale. So if you have different nodes or keyframes, you can use the F key to automatically center. So say we zoomed way out and this got lost, you can hit F and it'll pull everything back into view. All right, so now that we have our workspace positioned in the way we want it, we wanna save it so we can use it later or use it on other scripts. So what you'll do is you'll go to save workspace, you'll give it a name, we hit OK. Nuke will tell us that it's been saved. It also gives us the location of that save. Say you wanted to move this to another computer, you could then grab that file and load it later. So now you'll see that it's added it to our list. So if we jump into a different workspace, we can always go back to that one. We can just save over it if we want to modify something. And that's generally how, how you can modify these to work for you. Uh, one gotcha that you should be aware of if you are working in a space where you have multiple viewers, occasionally if a viewer is hidden, it might still also be processing. So if it's plugged into something and it's doing a read, it could be hitting your, your IO on your machine because it's, it's actually displaying in the background while your other display is also doing some processing and displaying. So that covers the basics of the UI. There's more information in the manual and I highly recommend you read about how to modify these. You can create custom panes and custom panels. I actually use a few different custom ones that do things like find and replace or insert values to help me in my daily work.